Order! Order! I call this court to order. With the release of Genshin Impact's 4.2 patch, we here at Actually Ray have been invited to present, for your viewing pleasure, our grandest display, a marvelous clashing of worlds. Where a selection of lovely ladies of Tebat will be called to the stand and you, audience, will bear witness to how they change. Or I had an excuse to draw Genshin girls in prism. Howdy hey, I'm Ray. This is a sponsored video because we've got to save up money for our studio, brought to you by Genshin Impact. With the drop of 4.2 and our lovely Hydro Archon's gotcha debut coming so, so soon, if it hasn't already dropped by the time this video goes up, I thought, what a great time to study some of these designs. See how I can adapt them to my personal style and how they might look in my little OC project. For those unfamiliar, Prism is where magical girls are all military and all the pretty colors are a great distraction to what's really going on. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, I could only pick a few. Genshin designs are famously complicated. And to decide who to draw, I had to lean on what ideas I had for a prism design instead of who my favorites are. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get started. As I mentioned before, the thing about Genshin designs is that they are all extremely intricate. Since Genshin's a video game that mainly uses 3D models for their characters, they can get away with that. But since Prism would ideally be a 2D animated show one day, I need my designs to be much more simple and animation friendly. Not that I don't struggle with loving details myself. So to practice and to properly check all of this into my visual library, I did two pages of doodles for each character to explore how they might look in my style. I tried to only carry over the most important details or ones I liked the most because it would help me later down the line to have their designs already translated into something more up my alley before I go changing them completely. Essentially, I've given myself a cheat sheet. I said these are the parts I want to focus on, the rest is just very pretty noise. But you know, even while trying to simplify them, my god, Genshin designs are hard. Kokomi in particular is so hard to draw. She's beautiful and I love looking at her, but I'm having such a hard time unraveling all these overlapping fabrics in my head that I'm kind of starting to hate her a bit. Even with their 3D model up for reference, this is hard. I respect women, I don't deserve this. I had fun though. I was just really confused most of the time, but that's fine. The plan after this was to start all the first draft prism designs next, but things got a little political amongst my team. While I was going over my options, the Genshin players amongst us collectively threatened my life if I didn't include Kokomi. They demanded I draw Kokomi, so no matter how much I hated drawing her, I had to keep her. That's fine, I guess, that's all in good fun, but Robin couldn't let go of Lumine and continually pitched her to me until we made a deal. The threats about Kokomi would be dropped if I did Lumine instead. Robin even already had ideas for the themes and everything for me. They sweetened the pot. They stated their case before the eyes of this court, and they made an offer I couldn't refuse. Pretty underhanded tactics, if you ask me. That means the guys won't get what they want in the end, but by the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Robin is decidedly not guilty. Lumine's big function in the game is that she can unlock all seven elements, so in Prism she should get seven colors. But her outfit's also a mostly white layered dress, and that plus the collecting colors thing would make her a little uncomfortably similar to Cat for me. So instead of using the Traveler, Robin suggested that instead we do the Princess of the Abyss Order. They thought her weapon should be like shooting stars, and that her outfit theme should be heaven, and we both thought the duality between heaven and the abyss would be fun. I have not played too far into Genshin myself, so I'm I'm trusting Robin for the direction of this one in blind faith. Because of that, I wanted to prepare for it a little differently. This time, I condensed all of my looming exploration to one canvas, and on my second one, I drew this group of enemies from the Abyss Order to give me ideas for what an Abyss Princess looming might look like. I do not often get to draw little monstery guys like this, but I actually really enjoyed it. They had good shapes. This had better not get me into a mecha phase or anything because my attention span can't handle that right now. And with that, my practice is done, with two spare kokomis to sit on the bleachers. It's time to start figuring out how to put these girlies into prism. Why did I do that? <laughs> I've talked about the current prism design conventions at length in other videos, so I'll keep this brief. Basically, their outfit has a theme, their weapon has a theme, the number of main and accent colors on their outfit determine how powerful they are. They have these little crystal companions that turn into crystal shapes when they're asleep, and whatever shape that is will appear on their outfit somewhat prominently. With all of these first drafts, I didn't focus on the number of colors right away. Maybe not smart, I just wanted to test out how to bring in my themes and make sure that any prism outfits would stand out from the originals first. 
I tested out two themes to start for Klee. I could have followed after her mom and made her a witch, but like, look at her. Look at her, she's a cute little mailman. So the first theme I wanted to try is Hermes since he's the messenger of the gods. Super easy to embrace the feathers on her hat and give her the winged headpiece and shoes from the Olympian inspiration. This clearly gets the message across, so then I felt comfortable making the rest of the outfit a bit more postal. I designed the top of her dress to look like it could be hiding that it's a button up, and I replaced her scarf with a tie to look more like a uniform. And then I designed this super cute messenger bag I'm so happy with that looks like a mailbox and an envelope. She is so magical. And she's got those university brochures that your grandpa keeps sending you. Second drawing, I tested out themes of Santa and Santa's elf. Both of them seemed like they'd look perfectly normal with a sack of mail in hand, packages, or mail. Ultimately, I went with the elf. Please regular outfit has got these darling little pom-poms that inspired me to add those and jingle bells to just about every inch of her. Shout out to these ginormous bastards on her hat. I think that's the big thing that makes the design feel like a true magical roll design to me. It's gotta feature some extreme anti-utility. You better have something comedically oversized on you, and if you don't, then I expect to see at least three layers in that skirt, you hear me? So those are the first drafts. I think the elf one reads more like a Christmas skin than it does a magical girl, but she's just so cute. Yoimiya's ponytail was already shaped to resemble a fancy goldfish tail, but I wanted to take that shape language a step further because the outfit theme is also going to be goldfish. I tied the ponytail up in an orange ribbon, shaped it like the hair was super thick, and some of the ribbon stuck out so it would look like the body of the fish. Subtlety has left the building. I agonized over getting her hair to the shape I wanted, but everything was all uphill from here. I couldn't be happier with how this ultimately turned out. I had to majorly cut back on all of her accessories, but I tried to make up for them with this grand statement piece of an actual fishbowl on her hip, but with a fake fish inside of it because she's a good person. And some hanging bubble accessories. Since her original outfit is so asymmetrical, I emphasized that on the orange part of her prism dress too, but otherwise I was shaping it to taste. I was gonna test a second design for her like I did for Klee, but I didn't really want to. At most, I wanted to try a couple of adjustments with a pose that let me focus on her other side better, actually give her some shoes, but I'm so happy with this outfit as it is. I changed her corset and shoes to also be pearly, white with roughly rendered blue and yellow shading like on the other pearls. The extra blue fabric hanging off her hip in the first one was pretty aimless, so I tried to straighten out the shape and make the ends look like water. It ended up giving pretty strong ocean vibes, and that's not where goldfish live, but it looks cute, so it's fine. I don't know if I'm even gonna change anything for the final draft. I love this girl. Farina's up next, but she's actually the first one I drew. I scribbled this first one down before I went to sleep one morning in the heat of the moment so I wouldn't forget. I feel like Farina at her default already ticks a lot of the magical girl boxes. I mean, she's probably not the one who looks the most like a magical girl from the whole cast, but I was intimidated in the moment about making sure to design something that didn't just look like normal Farina. This is what I came up with. It's fine. It looks nice. The second one, I was rested. I had a stronger idea for what theme she might have. Farina is the god of justice, but justice is a bit of a hard concept to build from by itself. A court judge wouldn't really suit her, a lawyer's way too plain, especially for someone so dramatic. But Libras are associated with justice. Their symbolism is scales, and Farina literally made a giant machine that's just a huge scale. And listen, I know that Libra is an air sign, but we can collectively, selectively ignore that. Come on, let's do it as a group. The biggest thing I did with her outfit to convey Libra, aside from smacking the symbol on the front of her skirt, was making everything symmetrical. Scales, balance, yes. I left the heterochromia because that's a key visual point in her design, but aside from a couple tiny deviations, the act of making the design symmetrical and trying to keep it from getting overcomplicated really helped me to make the design more independent from her official one. I like this. This is a good direction. Moving on to Lumine, I was struggling at first because heaven is also a hard concept to base a design on. I tried giving her flowy clothing like a more traditional angel, but I made them pretty dark and I gave her a rainbow scarf since she's gonna have so many damn colors. The theme wasn't coming across at all though, so I stopped everything else to focus just on conveying heaven. The only things I could think of in order to do that were clouds and the pearly gates. Since the dress was already pretty cloudy, I really only had to add golden bars to look like fancy gate doors. I love the look of this, but we lose basically all of the abyss inspiration. 
So with her new scarves, I tried to color them to look like oil slicks as a way to get in those nasty, naughty vibes and still incorporate all the element colors. I don't think this fits the criteria for the theme I was aiming for, and I don't even really think it looks that much like a magical girl, but god damn do I love how this looks. Filed away in designs I simply must repurpose for something in the future. Take two took two takes. I really wanted to try and bring in the abyss aspect of the outfit more, and I wanted to play with how I depicted the gates. I thought maybe a metal corset would give off similar vibes. I also colored it to look like Prima Gems this time instead of making it gold because they are called the pearly gates. I think the gate look is definitely lost by the end, but maybe that's fine, as long as they inspired some costume direction. Where we ended up is not my favorite design, honestly, but it's just a draft, so that's fine. This means all my drafts are done, so it's time to finalize. For Klee, all I knew for sure was that I wanted to use the Hermes theme. I figured everything else out on the fly. I would change things like making her skirt more like the one I did for her second draft because the silhouettes of her messenger bag and the billowing skirt competed too much. I also left out her pigtails because we just didn't need them. Pretend they're tucked into her hat. This outfit really came together for me when I decided that I didn't have to be faithful to how I drew the feathers on her hat before. So I let the wings be super cute and chibi and round and I added butterfly wings too. I feel like it really helped to differentiate the design from any of her inspirations and make her more my own. For one last fantastical element, I gave her a giant translucent bow on her back with only just enough line art so the ribbons looked like an extra set of butterfly wings. Super love how this came out, very proud of it. Last thing was her prism. In game, Klee has this cute little stuffed animal named Dodico that I wanted to base her prism off of. But Dodico is incredibly fluffy and prisms are these gangly little things. So because her theme is Hermes, I shaped the ornaments and tail to look like a pair of wings, but I pushed the shape and size of them so the silhouette would be similarly fluffy like Dodico again. I made changes to Yoimiya if only for the sake of not just going with my first draft. I changed her bracers to these weirdo gloves, but they completely poof out right from the finger holes. You can hardly call them gloves, they're more like skirts for her hands, and match her actual skirt. The extra blue hip fabric has been changed to exactly half of a bow that has ruffles only on the very end of its ribbon to look like foamy water ripples. I almost got rid of the bow in her hair because it kind of competes, and especially in this pose, it was unavoidable that the tassels were gonna cover up parts of the ponytail in her hand that I didn't really wanna cover up. The long cords really added to the magical girl vibe though, so I just went with it. I feel like this final design works better for the assignment, but I don't consider it an improvement from the draft design. Not in a bad way, I don't know if I like the final draft dress more or less than the first draft one, but I think she looks great and I'm thrilled with the turnout. Her prism's got a goldfish tail as well and I gave it antenna because Yoimiya also kind of has a butterfly thing going on. I named it Pearl because of the sweet pearl candy box she's got in her original design. A couple nods back to where we started. For Farina, I was pretty happy with her second draft and I thought it would be good with just a few touch-ups. This time I made her entirely symmetrical except for her eyes and I stopped using the teardrop shape since they didn't really add to her Libra theme at all. Prioritizing Libra over Hydro since I'm not focused on preserving the elements themselves, just their colors. The most daunting part was always going to be the color scheme. Because she's an Archon, you could reason that she should have a lot of colors and this outfit is pretty geared towards monochrome. But then I thought, at least at the time I was drawing this, we hadn't actually seen much of Farina's Archon power and she's directly avoided showing them off every time she's been prompted. So it had me wondering that, by her own words, if the gods can be separated into the mediocre and the excellent, if she hasn't got a secret. Going with that little headcanon for now, I decided I'd give her just one main color and one accent color, but there's a lot of hue variety in her main color, so you might think she's got like three main colors, but it's actually just one. I'm the creator, I say what counts as a new color or not. Lastly, her prism is based on those water familiars she has as a playable character. I wanted to find an aquatic creature with arms and legs so the prism body type would work with it, and I landed on an axolotl. Its name is just Professor Gillian, because if there's any fun French words for axolotl that aren't just axolotl, I can't find them. Final design, Lumine's last. Best for last, right? How's this going? She's kicking my ass, bro, this sucks. Do I miss Kokomi? Do I? I was testing out as many ideas as I could, but none of them really looked like a magical girl to me. I can't get her outfit to look good in black. I don't know if this is even recognizable as Lumine. And like, pause. I've done this before. 
where I get so caught up in trying to force the same idea to work instead of trying something new. I feel like the solution here is that I need to go back to the drawing board, do some other character studies, force myself to explore different angles, but unfortunately, I simply don't have time. That's the thing with sponsored videos, they come with deadlines. So I'm gonna have to admit defeat for now. But your consolation prize is a non-Prism Magical Girl Lumine in the thumbnail, and my team voted that this draft was their favorite, so she can stand with the others in the final lineup. And that's it for Genshin as Prism! Here's all the final designs. So sorry to all the Kokomi enjoyers out there for not drawing her this time. Robin also says they're sorry, but not sorry enough to take it all back. Let the record show I don't believe them. Don't forget to download Genshin Impact to see Farina in action in 4.2. Her banner, The Chancet of Many Waters, is now live for a limited time, and the Masquerade of the Guilty awaits. With the next part of the Archon Quest now available to play, and a new weekly boss that's straight out of my nightmares, Fontaine will be forever changed. Seriously, what is going on with Farina? Good luck wishing! Available cross-platform on PC, mobile, PS4, and PS5. And if you'd like to support us, please check out my Patreon! We're doing a test stream this weekend where $5 patrons can submit their artwork for our very first critique stream. And if this goes well, we're thinking of setting up a new tier, so it'd be great to see you there. $2 a month gets you access to everything I post, $5 a month lets you into our twice monthly streams, and $10 a month gets your name listed at the end of our videos just like this! Thank you so much to... Donald Murphy, Serena Argyle, Catrex, Lemony Wing, Caesar Ringome, It's Riley, Styx, Prospero's Moon Moon, King of the Ladybugs, Vivigno, Foxy Hooligan, Atlas Dolorosa, Idiot Rabbit, Greymon, Catacamarina, Sad Raven, Inkster Link, Wahwa Ponko, Rain World, Pastel J, MC Skittles, Fish Hearts, Emil, Diongo, Merlin, C Addy Baddies, Zoner King 34, Angelic Pudding, Raz Candy Pup, Angel Aphrodite, Leah Michelle, Aquarius Sketches 13, Dreamy Elfie, Zero PG Star Zero, Goblin Dog Comics, Star Soul Studio, Morgan Shadow Squatter, Snapdragon Fern, Wishy Moos, Wing Wing, Mogumi, Aki, and Komodori, Number One More Aglad Sim. Alpha Oregay, Alpha AC Roberts, Darkheart, Blue, Jade Warlock, Pebbly T, Ursula 707, Data Fox, Jaxlberry, Sprite Bulb Conception, River Pancakes, Ashes Too Common, Via V, Velvet V, Natalia, The Written 73, The Loud Artist, 360, Iava Boy, Just a Sketchy Nerd, The Names Raymond, M Trey, Hell Pup, Scissor Reaper, Gerard Alvarado, Pizarro, Chaotic Creations, It's a Me, Mari, Oculus Portfolio, Mar Please, Nabura, Sushi McNushi, Isaga Inkblood, Jesper Barrel, Alabaster, Solix, Sailor Star Bones, Area Days, Heavenly Deity, Ambit Bunny, Twisted Mind, Ace, Shrimpy Boy, Bo Cinebral, Claire AD, King Jester, Moon Pie Dumpling, Jamie Cloud, Larice, Dahlia Dreamcraft, Vesicile, Rainy's Corner, Nerd King 14, Blazing Locust, Berkey Knight, Snail, Connor Robinson, Honey Beast, Fawn Envy, Martin Anderson, J. Rybloom, Buttercat Row, Eddie Star, Vendetta, Elizabeth Ishii, Popsicle Personify, Leon Duxer, Rudio, Your Resident Disney Princess, Posse Homestuck, Ruined My Goddamn Life, PTR Draws, Fool on Cool, The Crystal Paladin, Damn Creativity, SL Emmy, Mim Silvernote, Steph Guz Doodles, CJ Duffy, Sweetly Sinstra, Strawberry Kitty, The Sleepy Detective, Bun Bun Boy, Luby Z, Exorcist Lilum, Gravity Drop, Miss Contrary, Glasses Protag, Mist, Queen Sinoko, Night King, Sunset Lemonade, Lucas might be Mothman, Nate Locke, Shards of Shattered Space, Gremlin, Cassie Wrights, Blue, Genuine Hero, Mario Medina, Zephyr Kristoff, Spidey Jr., Sholia, Ghostly Goat, Karina Floraline, Ali Mocha, Kitty Freak, Phantom Bagel, Zachary Borgs, Dragon Draws, Stymphalian, Kyger, Capri Crocker, Basically BB, Monster Freak, The Legend of Alice, Johnny Ariano, Rain Jake, Luna Lou the Mew, Boring Studios, Daphne Jolly, Neon Pasu, Egg Oak, Gallivanting Galliform, Singer Lee, Jordan Ripley, Dusk, Draw Bar, Bowie Knife, Thunder Evermore, Field of Clovers, D. Henry, Mama Peaches, Fire Newt 451, Madu, Michael, Emiraki, Yakimo Soul Queen, Cat Dagger 2, Lazy Roller, Dracos, Fuzzy Shadow 2468, Schooly Sweet, Ah, uh, Gigi Cat Meow, Embla, Scriblet, Cuddle Cuddles, Wimblestorf Art Lauren, Dylan MX, Mallow 2, Alien Drag Queen, Shortcake Snake, Andre, Mew Kichigo, Niko Zawa, Zelfus, Key the Queen, Felicity, Makaru, Dust Lotus, Russell the Jimmies, Nico Starcy, Andrew Robinson, Chris Staru, Kurt Coolman, Cody Richard, Hikari Yu, Johnny Stars, Kara Stark Strange, Peachy Mint, and Aswix. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Hope you're having an awesome day. Bye!